Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. And we will start off our uh, service with our opening song, which is number 381 in Voice United, Spirit of Life. sing our first hymn, and it's 220 in Voices United, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Oh, my. 
12 years ago. So I just remembered that. So. <laughs> but it's always good to remember that, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I invite you to turn to the bulletins for our call to worship. Or it's for the prayer for the day. Almighty and compassionate God, every day that our desire to meet our wants, avoid discomfort, and shun those who do not know our well, we show ourselves to be unworthy of your gifts of life. Of this we are sorely aware, and we ask your power to renew us in body and spirit, that we will be able, through your help, to walk in the way you intend for us. Forgive us and lead us through Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Just as Jesus made the deaf to hear and the mute to speak, our merciful God lifts our burdens from us, removes the failures of our past, and turns us to new life. You are forgiven. Walk in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, I do have the bag here, and who would like to open it? Shirley, do you want to open it? See what's in the bag? Sure. Okay. Okay. Dig in. Take a look and show everybody. So what does that look like to you? Well, it's a notepad that you're keeping notes on. Yes. Do you know what specific notes there are? Or just on the top of the title of it. Week of September 3rd. Yeah. That's your this week? This is this week. Okay. So what, what do you think that is? That's your timetable for this week. Or it's a to-do list. It? Probably to do with worship and, um, uh, and, you know, things that you do throughout the week as a pastor. Yes. And other things in my life, too. Yeah, and look after your wife as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But she did such do something really nice to me on Friday, too, oh, okay. so that was... Uh, she looked after me when I didn't expect it. Well, that's nice. Yeah, and I was, I was doing my practice judging, uh, my last apprenticeship to be a baking judge, and I ended up having judges have to wear white, and I had like butter tarts, droppings, <laughs> and, and apple pie droppings on there, and I was then having to judge next morning flowers in another fair, so I had to get it clean, so I, instead of, before I came up here for office hours, I put it in the wash. When I came back, I put it in the dryer for me. Oh. Yeah, so I wouldn't have to stay up late to do that. So, so this is a list of things I've got to do, which is sort of what I call my mission. And who forgets things and needs to write it down? Oh. This, this keeps me going so I remember stuff. So uh, especially what happens when you get busy, sometimes you forget something that you need to do because something else takes priority. This list is an ongoing list. It's it's done by priority. Some things gotta be looked after right away, but when you look at the more urgent things, the little things still don't get forgotten. You don't forget them. So that's uh, that's what I do. I make a new list every week uh, when I start the office week. So, and, that's what it is. Sometimes we forget, and this story is about forgetting the mission that we have in, in somebody in the story, in the Bible story, forgets a mission as well. All right, so let's start with the, uh, the scripture, and we're going to Psalm 125, I believe, and that's in 849 in our voice tonight. Those who trust in 
of God are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so God, you surround your people now and forever. Yes, it has happened to all of us, and it's usually when we're busy or tired. The scripture from the Gospel of Mark is an example of this, and even Jesus forgot his mission, and in the scripture someone called him out on it. The beginning of the selection states that Jesus was tired. And the last geographical place listed in the gospel before this scripture selection was Gennarasset. It said that he went away from there to the region of Tyre. And then it says the first thing he did was enter a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. <clears throat> but even when he was tired and wanted to be out of the spotlight, word got out that Jesus was in that house. It says, a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. 
Jesus is tired. He wanted to take a break, but even when he tried, others would come. Jesus felt safe in that house. He was ready to rest. But this woman interrupted that. Most people try to avoid talking about the response that Jesus gave. And some ministers try to gloss that over. And the reason they try to gloss it over is because it's not the Jesus that we have learned about. It is not the Jesus that we cherish when we sing, Jesus loves me. What Jesus says when this woman invades his space is very rude. Jesus made rude comments about her origin. She, a Gentile woman of Syphonian origin. She was an outsider, and her reaction to her request, his reaction to her request was to, was to rid her daughter of a demon. Jesus' reaction was typical of what one person might say if they are overwhelmed with requests. He said, let the children be fed first, for it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Metaphorically in this scripture, the children are the children and the people of Israel. And the dogs was everyone else. In the safeness of the house or sanctuary, Jesus stated what any other human would say. Help yourself before helping others. This reaction shows the human side of Jesus. Jesus was, both in his life, human and divine. And being human, Jesus shared the emotions of humans, both good and bad. Jesus, in this moment of taking a rest, was showing his human side giving a human response, which was common in his context. But the little woman who was just named as a dog by Jesus knew his divine side. She wanted her daughter to no longer have the demon controlling her actions. So after being insulted, She reminds Jesus about his mission, thinking that he had forgotten about it. She says, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. In this statement, she reminds Jesus that his mission is to be the presence of God to all on earth. Jesus, in this moment, had forgotten this mission to minister to all. Not just those who are of Jewish faith. She reminds him that even those who are on the margins see this divine presence and can receive the love and grace of God. Jesus, in this human moment, in his downtime, forgot the mission. And this woman, who is unnamed and desperate, reminded him of what his mission was to extend the love and grace of God to all, regardless of background or history. She knew the power he had. She knew this power came from the God of love. She knew Jesus had it in him. She knew even a little bit of his presence, a little bit of his power, would set her daughter free to resume a life without a demon controlling her every action. Jesus, in this response to this statement, remembered his mission. He remembered that he was called to serve, share unconditional love and grace. This woman called him out when he was leaning too much on the human aspects of his life. She reminded him of what he could do with his divine powers. She reminded him of why so many people flocked to him 
even if they could just touch him, his divine side would heal them and soothe them and set them free. After being reminded of this, Jesus did something spectacular. He declared to this woman, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. This healing in the next line was verified when it said that the woman went home and found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Jesus was able to heal from a distance. His power did not have boundaries. But this interaction with this woman re-energized Jesus. He forgot the mission and now that he was reminded he left that house and went from the region of Tyre and went by the way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of Decapolis. It was there in yet another Gentile area that a person was brought to Jesus to be healed. This was another person that was on the margins of society, a person who was outside the culture and faith in which Jesus was raised. This time it was a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. But Jesus did more than that. Jesus took him aside in private and away from the crowd and put his fingers to his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephtapha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, and his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Now that this woman reminded Jesus of his mission, he continued the mission of offering love and grace and healing to whoever requested it. In his mission, Jesus encountered those who believed what Jesus said in this human moment. There are those that believe that Israel should be fed first, and that the people on the inside should be looked after. Those who believed that did not like it when Jesus was welcoming and healing, being a healing presence to those on the outside of the establishment. They did not like his actions and love shared to those who were considered dogs. To stop his actions, they had a captured tribe and put to death. But Jesus in his divine side emerged out of his downtime in the tomb and ushered in new life for all in his resurrection. In our lives, we are a bit like Jesus. We are human. But we also have the presence of God in us through the Holy Spirit. But like Jesus, we get tired and need rest. Like Jesus, we forget our mission as a church. The house in the scripture is like a church building. We go there to get rest and solitude. Some of us go there because we're in the presence of people we love. When we go there, we're, pe we're there with people we're familiar with, with us and people that are like us. But sometimes, like the Gentile site, people like the Gentile Cyprenesian come into our place of worship looking for help. Because this person does not look or act like this, sometimes we deny their request. We are sometimes focused on our own struggles and concerns. We forget the mission of the church. We are focused on making sure the house of worship is in working order instead of reaching out to others who need our love and need our presence. This scripture reminds us the mission of the church, which is to share God's love and grace and healing power with all. People do come to these stores seeking spiritual healing, seeking a connection with the living God that is alive in us in the Holy Spirit. Even a small thing, like acknowledging their pain and offering prayer can make a big difference in their lives when they do come to us. What they're looking for 
is crumbs because even a crumb of love and grace can go a long way to a person who's considered to be on the margins of society. As a church and as a church goer, sometimes we forget the mission that we're called to do. We forget that we are loved by God and that we are called to share this love with all. Even when we forget, God does not abandon us. God does not punish us. God will always send us reminders of this mission. This scripture reminds us of the power of God's love and the difference it has made in our lives and the difference it makes in the lives of others. Thanks be to God. Amen. And we will sing our next hymn, number 326, O oh, 4,000 Times to Sing. There and then our soup and sandwich luncheon is coming back on the 27th, and I guess there'll be some planning involved with that on the 18th meeting, right? So, and um, we do have, and we have uh, uh, many people came out for Emily's uh, first week here. She had a nice little uh, um, office hours with some refreshments, but uh, pop in and say hi when she's in uh, this week. I believe it's Monday and Tuesday. 
basically. So, um, as for my office hours, I am in Tuesday and Thursday. And Thursday. Thursday, I will have everything done because it's get, this is our fair that I participated in most in the staff fair. Um, so if you want to say hi to me, I'll probably be downstairs. <laughs> so come and say hi to me downstairs there. You just have to follow the steps. And talking about downstairs, um, we do have our apple pies are coming up. Art, do you want to say a few words? Certainly. Okay. Do you, what, do you want to come up to the microphone too? Okay. Okay. So everybody can see it. <laughs> For sure, apple pies start in October again. I did apple pie making. And uh, this year we're going to be able to start at least a week earlier than usual because apparently everything is uh, maturing and ripening more quickly than usual, even far more quickly than last year. So we picked them up uh, I think the Friday the 4th of October. So we're going to start uh, making on the 9th, which is a Wednesday. Following that is exactly one week later on the 16th. And I've already uh, probably contacted three quarters or more of the volunteers, and I've had a more positive reception this year. In other words, fewer so far changes or whatever, and more volunteers are able to do both days than I ever had before. So thank you very much. And if you haven't been called or talked to, I will be called. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I really do look forward to the apple pies because it's like the attendance is really good. I can almost do a sermon while we're doing it because it's got a bigger audience. <laughs> And uh, is there any other announcements? Okay, here and then we'll move on to your generosity matters. And this week it's entitled, It Starts With Education. Through your generous support of mission and service, our partners are nurturing seeds of wisdom and faith in communities across the globe. By supporting educational initiatives, individuals are empowered to explore their spirituality deepen their knowledge, and build a better future for themselves and their communities. Imagine a classroom of kindergartners in a refugee camp where children eagerly gather to learn about the world and their place in it. Picture a young adult discovering the profound teachings of their faith for the first time, safely supported by their peers. Consider a group of parents and guardians gathered in a workshop sharing their hopes and dreams for their communities, guided by mentors who inspire them to lead with compassion and justice. Imagine people learning and restoring lost languages to preserve precious history and culture. These moments of great of growth are at our heart, and they are made possible by your compassion and generosity. As we look to the future, the impact of educational initiatives through mission and service partners becomes even clearer. Every lesson learned, every skill acquired, and every relationship built continues to a larger tapestry of hope and resilience. Whether it's a child in a rural classroom or an adult in a leadership program, the education provided through mission and service partners is a beacon guiding individuals toward a path of faith, understanding, and service. Together we are sowing the seeds of a more compassionate world. Thank you. And speaking of gifts of generosity, we're all gifts to share, whether it's gifts of time, talent, or treasure. And we will now take a moment to dedicate these gifts by singing more voices 191. What can I do?
that all may know your presence and live in your grace. Amen. Confident that God hears and knows our needs, let us pray for all creation. And when I say, Hears, O God, please respond by saying, For your mercy is great. Gracious healer, you visit us when we are in pain and worry. You spread your hands on our wounds. You speak to demons. You bring peace and freedom. Visit your churches and synagogues, mosques and ashrams, monastic cells, and places of prayer in every land for the well-being of all people of faith. Make us one. Hear us, O God. For your mercy is great. Creator of beauty and surprising complexity, we long for the wisdom we need in order to cherish this earth. Give us the vision to see what you have made, vast expenses of prairie forests and thick oceans full of wondrous creatures, and the heavens bigger than our imaginations. Show us how to keep your gifts as good stewards. Hear us, O God. For your mercy is great. Liberator of the captive, you know the failings of the nations when we turn to our friends and neighbors into enemies. Free our lands from despotic rulers, tricksters, people who lie for personal gain, and those who wield hate speech. Give courage and perseverance to those who are weary of the struggles for justice, so that new life and strength will infuse their tired bones. Hear us, O God. For your mercy is great. <clears throat> Savior, we see the desperation of our sisters and brothers as well as ourselves. And knowing your love for what you have made, we beg your promises to be fulfilled. Waters in the desert, healing in the time of death, protection from whatever is frightening, salvation for those who are without help. Hear us, O God. For your mercy is great. Holy God, we pray for those who grow our food and keep our water clean, for politicians who make good laws, and judges who will with compassion, for children, for elders, and for parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles and friends and strangers. Give to your world the means to live in harmony. Hear us, O God. And your mercy is great. Almighty One, you heard the cry of the Syphonician woman, and you answered her distress with the word. Say the word again today, relieve the suffering of your people. We pray especially for those who we now name aloud in our hearts, or in our hearts. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. For those of us who have helped us know you, we give you thanks. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. In your hands we place the welfare of all creation. In the name of the one whose life, death, resurrection, and ascension is our own life, Christ Jesus. And our final hymn is number 642 in Voices United, Be Thou My Vision. <coughs>
matter what we have going on in our lives, we are reminded of God's love and presence in us. We are reminded of our mission to take that love and presence with us into the world. As you embark on that mission, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Amen.